in terms of how to address, are you saying how to save mainstream media? Yes. How, how some, do, some version of Sure, sure. How, how to save mainstream media or how to, uh, you know, make it some, more relevant. Make it more relevant. Uh, what I would say is, you, it, it, honestly, as readers, all we can do is you have to, you know, on a very personal level, you have to let those editors know we're reading this, we're upset about that. Not a simple letter to the editor. Nowadays, you can find the exact editor who's in charge of the Middle East. So Fleischman, great reporter, he has an editor above him. So find that editor's name and say, you know, keep up the great work because that, that really goes a long way. Editors and publishers, they're neurotic about public, um, yeah, public opinion. Oh, absolutely. And, and the thing is, is that the right, especially, you know, the Tea Party or the wackos, I would say, they are the ones who have the bullhorn right now. And they're the ones who say, don't use a word of documented worker, use a legal alien. And so the, the mainstream media, they're like, well, like, they're nebbishes, basically. They're like, well, okay, I guess I'll, I guess we won't use undocumented anymore. And because they have the bullhorn. I don't see that happening from... The, you know, from folks on the left or progressives or whatever, whatever, whatever else may call you, and that has been a phenomenon. That I think there's, there has no. Here at UCLA, there was a, there has been studies on the hate speech used in talk radio, on the infiltration of those same terms in mainstream media reporting. That you know, the flippant use of illegal alien, for instance, or uh, particular subjects and the like. It's because they're acknowledging the, the editors at hand. They're acknowledging the loudmouths. They are acknowledging the loudmouth. So we have to be loudmouths ourselves. That's what I try to be in my own little my, my own little dominion of journalism. I try to be a loudmouth, and I'm I'm glad to say that it's my dominium, and no one can tell me what to do otherwise. All the way in the back. Uh, well, I. Sure, thank you. Uh, just in case you didn't listen to or weren't able to hear the question, the lady was talking about how nowadays with the death of print journalism that we're going to have a fractionalized media landscape, which we do have. So she argues, don't you, don't I think that the, the process of picking up language and, and you know, and mixing things together, if, if that's not going to speed up. Yeah, I, I do think it is. And that's why in, in that sense, I do celebrate the death of mainstream media. I don't think print journalism will die. I, 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 and what I do think, even though we might have our electronic media, our blogs, and our Facebook, and our Twitter, what rises above the fray is great writing. Right now, most of the, you know, great writing still has a very vibrant, lively home in the New Yorker, in Harper's, in the daily newspapers, although it's shrinking more and more and more. And a lot of what goes on in online media also, it's it's dependent on the mainstream media. A lot of, a lot of the most popular blogs they don't have original writing so much as they have original analysis on stories that the mainstream media does publish and does does connect. That said, though, I a lot of at least only until recently, the mainstream media always looked upon the internet skeptically, as you know, th this is basically our grim reaper. They're going to destroy us. Why should we embrace them at all? I personally, I love I love blogs. I love just. The Bare, you know, no, bare knuckles brawling that goes on there, the, the twisting of words. Uh, some, I'm, I mostly know the very vulgar ones. I'm not going to use them right now. But I love it. There is no regard whatsoever for the English language. There is no regard whatsoever for uh, propriety or being pious or, or whatnot. It really is like the great news, like the, the heyday of newspapers in the United States in the turn of the 20th century when it was that immigrant population that was influencing newspapers that had their own vibrant presses, that you had atrocities and all those words from two generations that were completely foreign, now being part of American journalism, or, or, or yeah, of, of the American vernacular. You see that a bit with Spanish as well. Amigo, people print Amigo now, it's, you know, no one uses italics now. If I use a word, como, you know, 
mis, mis relaciones, like my relations, or mi pariente, my relative, that's still going to be in italics, but there are certain words that do become, that, that do become um, accepted by, American, by the American English vernacular. However, I don't see that happening as much as you did in the past. So, and with really quick uh, example before I, I think I'm getting booted, so, or my time's up. Um, in the 1850s, there was a column by, uh, by a journalist, I think his name was Peter Finn Dunbar, but his column was called Mr. Dooley. Mr. Dooley, uh, the, the whole premise of Mr. Dooley, he was an Irish barkeep in Chicago and talked about the news of the day, but he, he wrote it in a very, you know, basically, the, when you read it, you would imagine a leprechaun to be writing it, you know, just very, oh, top of the morning to you, and like, you read it, it's, it's, it's quite remarkable. And it was a huge column in its day, and it lasted a couple of decades, and now, of course, it's completely forgotten. Only people who love journalism and only people who love ethnic America will remember that. Because what happened? The Irish became accepted in America. There was no longer a need to uh, truly uh, exotify the Irish. It's a process that happens, but also I would argue newspapers of the day, they were more willing to try those opportunities. Imagine the fear that would happen if the LA Times ran a column in Spanish every week. People would cancel their subscriptions. I, I, that would honestly happen. People would cancel their subscriptions and the Times would switch. The, when the mainstream newspapers just have plain and simple minority reporters, the token Asian reporter, the token Muslim reporter, the token Latino reporter, they get, you know, readers send them the nastiest remarks. We, we do not live in, in, uh, in how, do, how do I say, in an enlightened journalistic time. We do not. A century ago, we did. Now we don't. So I'm glad in that sense that the media is dying because, again, they don't want to take those risks. And the fractionalization, the, the fractionalization of media, I think, is a beautiful thing. It's a scary thing because no one knows what exactly is going to happen, but I happen to be an optimist, especially given the way this country has traditionally been with you know, all of our wars, you know, immigrant wars left and right. I'm still an optimist. If, if, if the child of Mexican immigrants can have a fascination with Yiddish to this day, then anything can happen linguistically in this country. Thank you.